Between 1827 and 1828, William Burke and William Hare killed 16 people out of pure greed. Due to a shortage in corpses for dissection for the benefit of his wealthy surgical students, anatomist Robert Knox was happy to pay a pretty price for fresh corpses. It was searching for this money that Burke and Hare took many poor, innocent lives. <laughs> Over 180 years later, it inspired a dark comedy romp full of slapstick and puns. Have you gone mad? No, Willie. We've gone into business. Showtime! Burke and Hare star Simon Pegg and Andy Serkis as the titular criminals. These down on the luck snake oil salesmen are looking for the next popular product for them to supply. After they have to get rid of one of Hare's dead lodgers, they discover that there is a high demand for corpses in the competing medical schools of Edinburgh. When the local militia cracks down on grave robbery, they start killing other people in order to make ends meet. Whilst aspects of the characters are certainly cliched, they are relatively well developed, even though there is rather a lot going on. You've got Burke and Hare and their respective romances, Robert Knox's work, and the investigation into the missing people all vying for screen time. But the film was only slightly interested in character development. The core cast do a solid job of the material given, as do the cameos. Some critics complained about the fact that this film was making fun of murder. On one hand, this is a film made by Ealing Studios, which made their name by making comedies about murder, such as The Lady Killers and Kind Hearts and Coronets, which are considered classics of British cinema to this day. On the other hand, these were not about real murders, nor was there gore, as this of course would not have been allowed in the 30s and 40s. Personally, while I can of course understand that the subject matter of this style of humour is pretty off-putting, and I myself don't have much of a stomach for gore, I enjoyed this movie. Another aspect that probably soured opinions on the film is that, unlike the Ealing comedies, this was inspired by real murders. Does the passage of time desensitise us to the historical loss of life? They make it clear from the very start that little of this is based on the real men. I don't think anyone was really thinking a film that ends with the Proclaimer song is focused on historical accuracy. It's pretty clear when a lot of it is made up too, such as the romantic subplot of work falling for actress turned prostitute turned actress Ginny, played by Isla Fisher, who's looking for funding for her all-female production of Macbeth. This film has about as much in common with the history as the 2004 version of the Around the World with 80 Days, which featured Jim Broadbent as real scientist and sceptic Lord Kelvin spouting his real belief that no more science was left to be discovered, to Steve Coogan as Phineas Fogg, standing there in motorised roller skates. The slapstick was also done rather well, and it was few and far between. The old town and new town of Edinburgh is already wonderfully preserved and visually stunning, but the design team really had a no-holds-barred approach to making the scenery and costumes look as authentic as possible. That's where I'm really ignorant of what Victorian Edinburgh looked like. This is one of those films where there's a cameo every few minutes, but you're unlikely to recognise several of them unless you're British. I honestly never thought I'd see a film starring the late Ronnie Corbett of all people. If you are a fan of Simon Pegg's breakout TV show Spaced, then you will definitely see a few familiar faces. Most notably as co-star and co-writer Jessica Hines, who plays Hare's wife. Despite reasonably big names in the supporting cast, none of them feel like they were stunt casting, as they all play their parts well, including Tim Curry, who unsurprisingly makes the best of his small role. All in all, Burke and Hare is certainly not for everyone due to its dark subject matter, but I found it to be a pretty fun film. Nothing groundbreaking, not exactly a must-see, but a fun little film that is a good way to spend the time. Although it doesn't reach the heights of their classic dark comedies, I'd probably recommend this to fans of those who can also stomach some of the more grotesque aspects of this film. If you want to watch me review another unusual and obscure British comedy that possibly bit off more than it could chew, you can watch my review of The Magic Christian here. See you soon! <laughs>